Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today I would like to talk about this simple looking ring, but there are a lot of mistakes that people may have and have a problem with this shape. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's go ahead to work on the new layer. Uh, let me turn this off and starting from the scratch. We want to start in with the ring with the exactly ring size that you want to have. In my case, I want to have 16 millimeter. And then um, for this view right here, I need to draw the profile of the ring. So let's go ahead and starting with the arc and going something a little bit wider on the side here and then uh, go a little bit narrower on the bottom. Okay, so on the top, it need to be completely flat. So I'm going to use the line. There's a line from the midpoint and open my grid snap and depends on how tall you want it for this one. And you may want to go something like that for whatever size that works for you. In, in my design, I want to have a little bit curve there. So the way I'm going to connect it, if you just draw, then they will look uh, they will have a kink over there doesn't matter how you draw this will be a kink and it may not look good after uh, you make it into the solid and then so if you are using uh, the blend for example and the way to blend like this way it it will have that bulge out there even though you want to bring it down like that so it won't look good so the way that i would do it is i will use a blend but i kind of want to give in a little reference line there and i want to use the blend command i want to blend from here to here and i may want to bring this down a little bit just because i want to have that that little dip over there Okay, so if you like that outline and you could go ahead to mirror that to the other side, then we can delete this reference line. Let's go ahead to join everybody together. So now I got two there. So on the side, I want to use that midpoint snapping there. Depends on how wide you want to have this one. Uh, this is going to be our reference line and we are going to use the arc tool and that's snapping to the end point here, end point here, and also the midpoint right there. So it kind of give us a really round top and I can delete this one there. Okay, the bottom one, I want to have the bottom is rounded as well. Uh, like we are going to snapping right here and um, maybe not as wide, but something like this. So you will coming down taper and then we are going to um, using the arc the same way that we are uh, working for the top and then we want to snapping over here so that'll look fine as a, as a profile there right so let's go ahead just snapping here to here and snapping here to here and we want to make sure we join everybody there so the, making this ring is quite simple we can simply just using the uh, solid extruded planar curve straight we pick up this one going in this direction we pick up the other one extruded this one as well going in this direction and we can simply just use the bowling intersection and we want to intersect this one and this one so we get this ring Right. So a few mistakes that you are going to see here. Uh, the biggest one, I think, is where the bottom coming into the point. The solution could be we can rebuild the bottom part and that's no problem. I, but I really don't like that look. If you look at the render, uh, you're going to see we have that look there and it doesn't look good. All right. The second problem we might have is you can see this line coming here and the straight line over here is a touching inside of the ring shank and it's going to have a problem when you try to fit it and of course this side is going to have a problem as well and I just want to show you what I mean there if we want to do fitted edges doesn't matter what this uh, 0.5 is quite small in for this ring and we want to pick up everything here and then you're going to see we have the problem there. Okay, so there's uh, two things we need to fix on this ring. Uh, first is the bottom, the second is the filler edges. All right, to avoid that, I'm going to delete the entire ring and we kind of need to address this one. If I'm going to have a fillet right 
uh, at the inside of a ring shank, this point where it's connected, it's going to create a problem because that is where the break is. So I simply going to pick up this one and this one, and I'm just gonna moving up maybe one millimeter there. Okay, so I can avoid the seam is completely contact there. The second thing is on the bottom, uh, even though I want to have a round bottom, but that where um, this one is touching there. So one thing that I can do is I can move this one down as well. Let's say minus one. So we'll have something like that, but let's take a look what the result is going to be. I'm going to um, extrude this one straight. And also pick up this one, extrude it, and we want to do the inter uh, bowling intersection, this one out of this one. All right. Again, we were still having that on the bottom. That means we cannot have any curve on the bottom. Any curve perfectly fitting into the bottom of a ring shank is going to create that weird angle. However, we do solve the problem for fitted edges since the seam is higher now. As you can see, let's do a test. I'm going to do a 0.5 millimeter and a, a good sign is when you pick on that it can select all the way around instead of a section and then you you know that you have a better chance and let's take a look on this then we will have no problem however if i want to fit the edge on the outside i'm still facing the challenging there on that little triangle there okay so the things on the bottom they cause the problem so here's what i would like to do i'm actually going to select everybody on the bottom and just get it all over you know it's it's much much longer than that one and um, then the the this uh, this curve over here and let's take a look one more time we're going to use the solid extruded planar curve straight and we're gonna use this one and pick up also this two curve extrude it again and we're gonna do the intersection and this one out of this one Okay, so as you can see now, it's really nice um, everywhere. It's no weird on the bottom, and we want to make the bottom slightly rounder. That's fine too. Uh, we we can do is fit edges. So I'm actually going to use the fit edges, and um, we're gonna fit edges here, here, and also outside, all the way around here. And coming back to the top and let's take a look on how it goes all right so you can see it is really nicely uh, coming out like this so now we will have a better ring with all nice rounded edges there um, a lot of this type of a ring will have some sort of a design you can put the uh, you can have a puppet setting in the middle to separate them is quite simple basically you want to create a box and for this box, you want to start in with the center and snapping right here in the middle. And you can do something more like this way. And, um, and just need to move it back a little bit. And we can just using the bowling uh, split and have this one split with this one. Okay, and then we can delete this cutting tool like this. And one thing about this rendering here is uh, if you look at the render view and you cannot see the, the differences between those two, you may see a fan line there. So what I usually like to do is giving a tiny fillet on all the way around on both sides. So I'm going to use the fillet and let's try something really small like 0.1. And I want to select all the edges there and 0.1 on both side of them and then you can see now I have the separation so if we uh, render this ring one more time you can see this a uh, separation between this one and others and it will make it more realistic all right I hope you enjoyed today's video I hope you enjoyed today's video whether you are a beginner or you are more advanced jewelry cat designer there are three things you need to know to boost your jewelry cat design skill I have a free webinar for you and the link is in the description below. Hope you like it and thank you for watching and I'll see you next.